Hi there, today I'm not talking about 3D computer animation but about image manipulation. A typical example of an image uh, manipulation is this one here. You see the inauguration of uh, the US President Donald Trump in 2017 here. Not a really big crowd here. Uh, but this was the inauguration of Barack Obama, the president before Trump. And in the news, Trump claimed that there were huge crowds there. And this was his first uh, press speaker here who showed this picture here. And uh, this obviously is from the Obama days and it was manipulated. So it looks like a huge crowd, although it was such a meager crowd here. Other manipulations here. A typical one is this one here. You have Lenin, the Soviet leader and founder basically of the Soviet Republic. And uh, he held a speech in 1920 and Leo Trotsky was standing at his side right here together with Leo Kamenev. And both of them are standing here and uh, they're missing here. They sort of expelled Trotsky. Uh, they had to manipulate that image. It was not easily done, but uh, you can see certain changes here. For example, um, there are changes in the texture of, of the wood here. And this wood, of course, is invented. And in back in those days, you did not have Photoshop, obviously. Uh, lots of uh, manipulations here. For example, this is Hitler. And uh, the original photo, he stands next to Goebbels, who uh, was his propaganda minister. And uh, here he is missing. We don't know the reasons why that is. And uh, we have lots of uh, examples here. Uh, for example, here we have a moustache because we want to ch exchange that person here. Or very easy to do even in the old days, uh, you would just exchange heads here. And uh, that's East Germany. Uh, that's an East German photograph. This is Ernst Thälmann, a communist. And this at his side is Willy Leov. He later was killed by the Stalin regime and the East German Republic which was on the side of the Soviets didn't want to see him in the pictures here in the school books. Anyway, uh, this by the way is an article from the German newspaper Die Welt and quite a while ago 2012. This image shows you Benjamin Netanyahu next to Ayatollah Khamenei harsh enemies and they are generations apart at least one maybe two generations but they are still in an image and I did this image and it's a fake news image it tells us the Iran government is big friend with the Israel government although they are still enemies and uh, th so this is politically impossible. It doesn't make sense to make a, f a fake photograph here. That's why I actually chose it. And you can decide for yourself if it works or not. And I'll show you br uh, briefly how this is manageable. And obviously there are other ways how you can achieve this. So first of all, you go to Wiki Commons and search for images which you can freely use. And this one is uh, Ayatollah Khomeini in uh, 1979 flying back from Paris, from his exile, to Tehran, where he started the uh, revolution. You copy that image and you paste it into Photoshop. It's right here. So it's a black and white photograph and now you search for your other bloke and that's uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. You see who photographed it. And you click on that image and it gets bigger. A click again, you have a really high resolution. You should always go for the highest resolu resolution. Right mouse click and copy that image and then go to Photoshop again and paste it into a new image because we need to clean it up now. So we have two images side by side now. Now this is the selection tool which is most commonly used. Zoom in with the control and plus keys and then just start drawing this thing. The outline has mistakes of course because it uh, but it does a quite intelligent selection and that's the crucial point when creating 
composites of photographs, you need to make a good selection. And this takes a little bit of time, but it takes much less time than uh, back in the, the, in the early 2000s when Photoshop didn't have that intelligent selection tool. So with the Alt key, you can deselect certain parts and then after a few seconds, you're done. It depends a little bit on your patience and time, especially hair is quite tricky. And it depends on the task you have. If you want to manipulate a black and white photo from the past, the hair detail does not matter really because uh, the resolution is not as good as in a current photograph. And then copy it and paste it into that image. You don't see it, although in the layer selection you do see it. And there's several ways to reveal it. I usually zoom out because the resolution of the Netanyahu photo is so gigantic. And now I go to transform and scale the uh, Netanyahu photograph. And here you see that it's uh, getting really small now when I scale it down massively. And now I can zoom in again. And of course the two images don't match at all. And uh, now I mirror Netanyahu because I want to place him to the left, which is much more comfortable, really. From a journalistic view, uh, a massive man manipulation. Now I'm setting it to black and white. And when we go and see the details, it's still a little bit too sharp. And when you look at Khomeini, the old image, you see that he has a lot of grain because that the, uh, the film grain was typical for the nine, uh, analog photograph days. And uh, in the filter section, you have, of course, such tools in order to make it grainy and a little bit blurry because Khomeini, although he looks in focus and the photograph is absolutely good, uh, but uh, the lenses of that time were not as perfect. Now you have grain, a little bit of blur in Netanyahu. This is the eraser tool. Now, if you want to detect fake manipulations, this is sometimes very easy, and in this case, it is very easy. Now, look at uh, Khomeini's face. Where does the light come from? He has a little bit more shadow on the right-hand side from our perspective than on the left-hand side, although the window is on the right side. And the reason is, of course, there was flash used in, in the photograph. And we don't see the reflections of the f uh, flashlight in Netanyahu's face. We see a shadow on the left, more or less. So the light is totally inconsistent. Now we have that line at the shoulder of Netanyahu. We need to blur this. And sometimes people, when they manipulate photographs, they forget about this. So you have to look at these kind of details. In this photograph, I actually thought that Khomeini's beard was manipulated, but it certainly wasn't because at that time. And why should, I, should you have done that? So a picture combination of two pictures, two de generations of pictures, is really easy to make. Be always skeptical when you see political images these days, because Photoshop gives you and other tools give you so much power to manipulate photos. I would not say that most of the images you see on Facebook, Twitter and in newspapers are manipulated, but uh, in a political context you have to be very, very skeptical. And with this I leave you alone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.